He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth and the light. No one gets to the Father except that he comes through me. Oh, let not my Say forsake you, forsake, forsake you. you. Let not mercy and truth. and truth say forsake you, forsake, forsake you. Write them on. Hey, write them on the tablets of our heart. Say.
What's good? What's good, family? I am so thankful that you decided to join us for the virtual worship service of the Breath of Life television ministry. Listen, Isaiah 55 verse 10 says that once the word goes forth from his mouth, it won't return to him void, but it's going to accomplish what he pleases and prospers in the thing that he sends it to do. I want you to know that once the word goes forth today, God has a word that is going to bless, help, and transform your life. So I don't know where you're watching from. Maybe you're watching from your couch, maybe from your cell phone, maybe you're in the car, maybe you're walking around the block. It does not matter. Once the word goes forth, it's not going to return void. But do me a favor. Don't watch it by yourself. Call somebody. Get somebody to come in from the backyard or the kitchen as we get ready right now to go into the study or the teaching of God's word. Hey family, I know the weekends can be long, they can be hard, and you go through a lot. And so at the end of each week, I want to encourage you to join me and the Breath of Life team for the Weekend Exhale with BOL. We were having these programs on Sunday, but now we want to begin the weekend giving you a little nourishment, a little nurture, giving you a little boost as you start the weekend. Every first Friday, I'm going to be doing a Bible study entitled The Playbook, where we're going to be looking at issues of doctrine and culture through the lens of the scripture. You don't have to guess. You don't have to hope. God is giving us a script in the word because the word is his playbook. I want to invite you to join me every second Friday for a show called Point of View, where Gianna and I do a deep dive into issues of marriage, dating, and relationships. Every third Friday, join Pastor Nugent and myself in the Vision Lab, where we're going to be making a heavy deposit into leaders of all ilks. We're going to be pouring into pastors, entrepreneurs, CEOs, ministry leaders, authors, and we're going to be talking about how to build that vision and move it from an idea to a reality. And then on the fourth Friday, we're introducing a new program called What Just Happened? We're going to be looking at whatever the trending topics in culture are. Danita, Pastor Nugent, and myself. We're going to be addressing whatever the trending culture topic is for that week or that month. We're going to be engaging with you. We're going to be answering your questions and trying to figure out how we as believers find our place in the larger culture. We go through a lot during the weekends. You can get overwhelmed. You can get a little stressed out. But before you go into the weekend, take a moment and join us to stop, breathe, and exhale with BOL.
Welcome back to This Week at the OUC. We're excited that you're here. I am your host, Kirk Nugent. And I am Paul Goodrich. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, it, it, we switched it up a little bit this yes, week. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we missed Joe Lynn, but <laughs> we switched it up this week. Uh, we have several announcements we want to mm -hmm. share with you. Even though we are not having our worship services on yeah, site today, yeah, yeah. we do want to share a couple of announcements with you so that you are informed, so that you know some of the things that are coming up and that we can celebrate with one another. First up is uh, this Sabbath, we will be worshiping with the larger Oakwood University yeah. family uh, and alumni from mm -hmm. all across the globe that will be coming in town. And guess what? Our speaker is Pastor Devil Air Snell. Yes. And, and he'll be speaking under the title, <laughs> False Pretenses. My Lord, my, I'm intrigued already. I'm <laughs> already intrigued. I'm already saying, what is that about? Yep. False pretenses. That is pretty awesome. That that's And so that's what our Sabbath experience is going to be along with a myriad of other things of course, that make up the alumni weekend experience. So we just want to make sure that you, you understand we're not meeting for worship service at the Oakwood University That's correct. Church. This will take place at the Von Braun Civic Center That's in correct. downtown Huntsville. That is correct. That is correct. So we wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of that. Mm -hmm. Also, we want to remind you of our communication survey. Yep. Uh, we want to make sure that we are um, scratching where you are itching as far as your communication <laughs> needs. So please the scan the QR code so that you can fill out the survey so yep. we can best give you the information that you're looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we don't get to do this every week, but we did want to do it this week. We want to put right in front of you the operation stretch mm -hmm. numbers uh, at how we're progressing towards our goals. Um, this number it was as of February, and so yeah. uh, as March comes to a close, we'll be working with Treasury and several others to mm -hmm. ensure that we have updated numbers. But we do want to put it before you so that you can be in prayer about what God would have you do for your family yes. in terms of giving towards this initiative. So yeah. definitely wanted to get that in front of you. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So we did speak about uh, Alumni yes, Weekend, indeed. which is going to take place. Um, festivities have already started. Absolutely. But specifically in terms of uh, Sabbath, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be at the Von Braun Civic Center, as we mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, but we do want to let you know that if you want to view it, it's not going to be on the Oakwood University Church platform. That's correct. But it will be on the Oakwood, Oakwood University correct. platform. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So definitely make note of that. And they even have a Friday night speaker who you can see on screen. And that is a pastor. Is it Paul Graham? No, 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 no. So, uh, uh, sorry, Sa Paul Saturday, Saturday night. Yes, speaker. Saturday, Saturday night. Speaker. Yeah, because Friday I night is already yes, gone. Yes, yes. So. Saturday night speaker. Saturday night speaker, speaker who is, is Pastor, yes. pa pastor, pastor Paul, Paul Graham. Graham. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Well, listen, um, Pastor, Dor uh, pastor Dorsey has shared with some things about uh, a deeper look. But first, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just, uh, that's Monday. I'm skipping ahead. Yeah, yeah, but first, <laughs> uh, there is an open house. So if you are in town this weekend, we want to make sure you guys get a chance to check out the Breath of Life offices and studios here in Huntsville, Alabama, um, in the Office of Regional Conference Ministries building, uh, just across campus. Uh, it's still here, you know, so if you're on campus, you can actually walk to it, mm -hmm. uh, but it'll be open from noon to 2 p.m. on March 31st. That's Sunday, so that's tomorrow. So want to see if you are here, we want to invite you to come and hang out with us. All right. So yeah, um, we do want to also let you know that on Mondays at uh, six, so, yeah, six thirty p.m. That's correct. Um, uh, uh, Central Standard Time. Yes, keep that um, in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Chris Dorsey uh, leads out in a deeper look, a Bible study, mm -hmm. and so we want to remind you about that um, to take part in that. And you'll see the Zoom information on the screen. So please. Uh, join us on Mondays at 6.30. Absolutely. And if you can, or if you, if you haven't bookmarked already, the OUCSDA.org slash online virtual services mm -hmm. page, uh, that page will have the Zoom information right there. You can actually click the button and just go right in on Mondays uh, when Pastor Chris is, is, is uh, doing that. And I'll say this, he has shared with us in pastor's meeting that it has been growing. Yeah. Uh, it has been wildly beneficial. And that is something that we're all excited about. So definitely uh, wanting to make sure we put that in front of you so that more people mm -hmm. can come and benefit from that as well. 
Man, uh, April. Uh, yeah, a lot happening with Breath of Life. <laughs> Ooh, April, April, April. Uh, this is the, the 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 series of shows that we started last year was called mm -hmm. Fresh Start Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but we, you know, took your advice. We heard from you. We realized that Sundays, while it was good, um, we wanted to make that shift towards the end of the week mm -hmm. uh, for people to go into the weekend with a bit of a. <sighs> <laughs> right? So we're calling it the Weekend XL with B-O-L. Yes. And it's a series of shows every Friday of the month, first, second, third, fourth. And if there's a fifth, mm -hmm. we will have something on fifth mm -hmm. Fridays as well. Uh, but the first Fridays is Playbook with Pastor Snell. The Bible is God's playbook. Yes. And so we wanted to put that out there in that way. And he deals with all kinds of topics. I'm telling you, if you haven't been catching this one, you want to make sure you do that. Alcohol, uh, several other things, mm. second coming of Jesus. All uh, right. There's some, All some right. big topics that yeah. he's, he's going to be yeah. tackling there. Good, good. Uh, but then second Fridays. Yeah, second Fridays, uh, point of view. That's um, right, that's right. Not just Pastor Snell, but also uh, Sister Janice. That's Snell. right, that's um, right. Looking at things from a his point of view or her, her point, point of that's view. That's so correct. And so, <laughs> you know, we, we want you to uh, be a part of that as Absolutely. we kind of look at things from a relational uh, relationship standpoint. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can tell you mm -hmm. that they are going to be dealing with singleness as well. In oh. fact, they do bring in a single, uh, okay. a, an expert, if you will, yes. somebody who, who believes that their ministry is uh, working with singles. Good. And so we're excited about that yes. and having that component. This is the, the full gambit of relationships. They, they're going to be tackling that with POV. Right. Uh, third Fridays is, is something that I get to work with Pastor <laughs> Snell on. This is the Vision Lab. This is for our dreamers, our our entrepreneurs, our visionaries, for people who uh, God has placed something in your heart and you're like, man, I, I just need some tips, tricks, best practice of how to bring that vision to reality. This is that space. And we want to make sure you guys get a chance to come and, and, and work with us on third Sundays for Vision Lab. Now, I'm intrigued about the fourth Sundays. <laughs> fourth, fourth Friday. Sorry, the fourth Friday. No, I, did you say Sunday? I maybe, I, okay. maybe I did as well. The fourth Friday. Fourth Fridays. Fourth what Fridays. What just happened? What just now, happened? Um, I can surmise what I think it's about, but you know, what did what did you tell us what it's about? Well, it's, it's exactly the title. The title is suggested. We will be dealing with hot topics okay. that are in, yeah, that are so. in culture. I yeah. mean, there are so many things. I don't want to name anything right now. I don't know when you're watching this, but there are so many things that happen in culture that you know, as as they call water cooler conversation. Mm -hmm. It's it's a buzz. It's it's trending on social media, and we want to talk about some of those things. Uh, we want to talk about what the perspective is. Uh, that what should the Christian ha yes. have yeah. or hold about some of these these uh, items in culture? I mean, we have an election coming. There's a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I won't so. dive into it, but that's what it is. What just happened? Myself, Danita Jones, and of course, uh, the, our host, Pastor W. R. Snell, will be uh, there for that one. And it's going to be like it's going to be a little it's more kind of laid a, back. Yeah, and it's going to yeah, be more I, conversational. I, I'm looking forward yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, unscripted. It's going to be fun. Looking forward. So to definitely that. wanted to make sure you guys are aware of all those things that are happening. Also in April yes. is, is, is the Excuseless, Excuseless series. Now, this is going to be great. Oh, people. my. Oh, <laughs> this my. is going to be great. So, um, so we, 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 the, the Pastor Snell has That's written correct. a book. That's correct. That's um, correct. A new book. Yeah. Looking forward to new it. Book. Excited about it. So, we're going to have a book launch. That's right. And um, where you can get the copy of the book, and you need to get it in preparation for the beginning of the series That's that right. will happen Sabbath. April the 13th. That's right. That will be when Pastor Snell will kick off this new teaching uh, series. We're going to have a special guest, musical guest. That's correct. Uh, Todd Galbraith. Todd Galbraith. I, I know you're looking forward uh, to it. I'm looking forward to uh, it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can have him in the Praise Cafe. I'm, I'm we'll hoping listen. we can get him yeah, in yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just for our online audience. That's correct. But that's April the 13th. And then April the 14th. That's right. We begin our 21 20. days yes. of prayer. Now, I know some of you felt cheated from the reset <laughs> at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Like, oh, seven days. What happened? <laughs> but we are giving you the full 21 Yes. days, uh, starting on the 14th, I believe it is. Yes, Sunday April, the 14th. Sunday the 14th, and we will go straight through. Our speakers are, are already getting prepped and ready. Mm -hmm. We'll be going through the book. So again, it's critical to make sure you get a copy yes. uh, so that you can follow along with us. But this is going to be a phenomenal time. If you just think about the term excuseless, I'm pretty certain you can come up with some, some motifs 
some yes. some threads, some yes. rhythms that we will be touching on, and it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Uh, I do want to make sure we we kind of touch base on this one, mm -hmm. even though it just happened yes. uh, yeah. a night or so ago. But that Had was a great our time. Part, uh, phenomenal. A great time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal. So, where were you? <laughs> where were where you? Were you? <laughs> <laughs> you? You missed it. You missed it. But it's not too late to go to the OUCSDA.org slash online virtual services page, which if you scan the QR code on the screen right mm -hmm. now, it'll take you directly to that page and you can actually register and it'll send you reminders mm -hmm. every fourth Thursday of yes. the month when we have cameras on. Our virtual online fellowship time, kind of a social, and we are excited about how we are making bonds together even in the digital space. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. none of our, our, this week at the OUC videos are complete without yeah. birthdays, right? <laughs> exactly, birthdays and anniversaries. Birthdays and anniversaries, that's so, correct. So here we go. So here we go, here we go. All right. uh, I'm gonna let you take the first set. Okay. <laughs> All right, please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Um, Kalkidan Belay, Martha Crutchfield, Samantha Frazier, Lelani Gamada, Courtney Garnett, Cameron Lawrence, Kathy May Rocker, uh, Donovan Reedus, Kelly White, and Marisol Wilson. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then on the 25th, we want to say happy birthday to Keyshawn Humphrey, Mary Jo McElhaney. Happy birthday to both of you. Look at that. I got, yeah. <laughs> got the smallest. Oh, you got two. All right. Okay. So, Tanya Campbell. Uh, Courtney Mullins and Cora Powell, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday on the 27th to Nigel Applewhite, to Adriana Bennett, uh, to Dorian Franklin, to Jendel James, to Kendall James, Landon Moraine, happy birthday. Felicia Barnard, uh, Sylvia Cooper, Nathaniel DeCanal. That's right. Uh, Kanasa Gamada. Ah, oh, two Gamadas. Two Gamadas, All yeah. right. Harold Grayson, Betty Harris. Happy birthday, jo John Jordan and Carol Payne. That's a correct. Happy birthday. Uh, on the 29th, we want to say happy birthday to, to, to Kiana Cunningham, Garnet Dykes, PJ Minor, Darlisha Pitts, and Kayla Rawlinson. Happy birthday. And then happy birthday. This is a special one here. Today. <laughs> Today. Today. This Today. is a, 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 yes. a Sabbath birthday. Yes. Sharon Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. Jaden Snell, Jaden, yeah, happy birthday to you, Demar yeah. Thomas and Morgan Williams. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to all of you. We want to say a word of uh, appreciation to mm -hmm. all of you who are uh, saying happy birthday to one another, even uh, in the comments section below. If we missed some of you, please let us know. We know that there may have been one or two anniversaries yeah. that we missed as well. And we'll and, get them next week. we'll get them. We, 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 we will get we them We promise you, we will get them. <laughs> we don't want to miss out on those we want to celebrate with you. But fam, we thank you so much for your time and attention for this week mm -hmm. at the OUC. Uh, we pray that God's richest blessings follow you throughout the worship experience today and throughout your weekend. All right, God bless you.
Calling all leaders, visionaries, dreamers, content creators. We're inviting you to the 2024 Vision and Dreamers Conference hosted by Breath of Life. The theme for this year is excuseful. We want you to know that this year's conference is not about spreadsheets, budgets, or accounting. We're gonna be talking about the process your soul goes through whenever you're developing or implementing a vision. We're gonna be equipping you with the tools to develop a vision ethic. We're gonna be talking about things like your frustrations, how to manage your fears, dealing with criticism, or enduring seasons of waiting. Join us at the Oakwood University Church, May 17th through 19th. We're gonna kick it off Friday night with a Vesper, a vision talk, and a mixer. Join us Saturday morning at 11, where I'm gonna give a word just for you. We'll be joined in partnership by gospel recording artists, Myron Butler and Levi. We're gonna have lunch together. And then that afternoon, there are gonna be a number of plenary sessions and breakout sessions. And we'll conclude Sunday morning with our vision brunch. We have an amazing lineup of speakers and presenters. Movie producer, Devon Franklin, YouTube influencers, the Onyx family, and Grammy award winning, Kelvin Wooten, and many, many more. I want to invite you to go to our website and register right now at www.breathoflife.tv. Registration cost is $150, but I want you to know that what you're going to receive is going to be way more than what you actually give. I believe that God has put a huge vision or dream inside of you, and we don't want to allow excuses to smother it. I want to invite you to join us on the revolution as we continue the journey of becoming excuseless. Are you tired of just being tired? Are you frustrated because your results never change? Do you feel like life is just going in circles? I'm excited to introduce my newest book entitled Excuseless. And I'm gonna be talking about how to cancel the excuses that smother our soul wellness. I need you to know that your issue is not your circumstances, it's not the challenges, it is the lies that we tell ourselves about why we're not progressing. 
When you tell yourself, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough resources, I don't have enough money, those are the excuses that are keeping you from becoming whom God has called you to be. So this book is gonna be talking to you about how to manage your distractions, how to overcome your fears, how to walk through procrastination and to become the best version of yourself. So join me on Saturday, April the 13th, as I begin a teaching series entitled Excuseless. Every Saturday and Wednesday, we're gonna walk through the Word of God and give you the cheat code to having a life filled with progress. And then I want you to join us starting Sunday, April the 14th for our 21 days of prayer. We're gonna march through the content of the book. We're gonna testify. We're gonna call on the name of the Lord and we're gonna grow as a community of faith. You'll be able to get the book Excuseless on our Breath of Life website at www.breathoflife.tv or on amazon.com. You can join us for our 21 days on our Oakwood University Church platforms and on our Breath of Life platforms. I need you to know that we're about to start a revolution. There's about to be a growth grenade. I wanna invite you to join me on this journey as we begin the process of becoming excuses. Hello, I'm Pastor Debbie Air Snell, Speaker Director for the Breath of Life Television Ministry. This ministry was established to take the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout North America and across the globe. My goal is to make Jesus Christ known through the preaching of the word. I need you to know that we need your financial partnership in order to make sure that the gospel can go into every hill, into every rural county, and into every inner city. And we can only take the gospel as far as the gifts that you lend to us. We thank you for your financial partnership in the past, and I'm asking that you would continue to be a financial partner with this ministry going forward. Here are some ways you can give. You can give online at our website at www.breathoflife.tv. You can send your gift by mail to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama 35814. You can call the office at 256-929-6460, or you can text the phrase give to BOLTV to 188-364-GIVE, or the easiest thing is through Cash App at dollar sign Breath of Life TV. I want you to know that every dime that you give goes right back into the ministry so that we can enlarge our reach and make sure that the entire world knows that Jesus saves and that Jesus Christ is coming again. God bless you and we thank you for your generosity to the Breath of Life ministry.
What's good, family? This is Pastor Snell. Looking forward to seeing you this Friday evening at the Weekend Exhale with BOL. This Friday, we'll be consulting the playbook, which is the Word of God. And we'll be answering the question, what does the Bible have to say about alcohol and drinking? I get that question all the time. But the good news is we don't have to guess. We don't have to go by what anybody else says. Our coach Jesus has drawn it up in the Word, which is our playbook. Look forward to seeing you Friday night for the Weekend Exhale. We're so thankful that you joined us this morning for the Breath of Life virtual service. As we prepare for a word from Pastor Snell, we just want to take a moment to pray for each of you. Dear Father, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. We thank you, God, for how you have calmed the storms in our lives. Lord, as we look back over our lives and we see all of the things that we've been through, the struggles, the losses, the disappointments, and all of the storms, we say thank you, God that we are still here, that you have calmed storms, that you've ridden through storms with us. And even if the storm didn't dissipate or it didn't disappear, we look back and we see that you carried us through the storms. And Father, there are some people who are right in a storm right now. And Lord, we just wanna call on your name and ask you to speak over that storm and say, peace, be still. Lord, we thank you that no matter the size of the boat we're in, whether it's a small boat or a big boat or a tattered boat, God, we can declare that we can make it through whatever we're going through because you're in the boat with us. Your presence is enough. So Lord, we thank you that in your presence is fullness of joy. Even though it's raining, God, I'm praising you. Even though I see lightning, God, I'm praising you. Even though the thunder and the lightning and the wind is blowing and raging about me, because you are with me, God, I can have peace in the midst of my storm. So Lord, we're praying, we're praying for each and every person who's in the midst of a storm. We're asking you, God, that you would speak, that you would breathe life into them and that you would give them strength for all that they're going through. Lord, we're praying for those who are facing injustice, who are facing different challenges because of their skin color or because of where they were raised or where they grew up. Lord, we know that you are the great defender and that you stand up tall on behalf of your children. I pray, God, that you would be a, f a defender. I pray that you would be a fence all around them every day. I pray, God, that no weapon formed against them would be able to prosper. And Lord, no matter where we are in life, God, we know that you are with us. And so, God, we praise you. We close this prayer with thanksgiving. We honor you today because you are walking with us in our storms. And we're going to make it to the other side. We declare that in Jesus' name, that we are victorious, that we are going to make it through all the things that the enemy has thrown our way. And we cannot wait to stand on the sea of glass and declare that we made it and that heaven was cheap enough. We praise you, God, for all that you have done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are here, moving in our I worship you, I worship you, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God.
Living Waymaker, Miracle Worker, You are my light in the darkness, my God. Come on, let's say this together. Turning lights around. So we worship you. I worship you. Say you. Of 1949, if you can stand on Halloween, there we go, there we go. Put your hands together, everybody. Celebrating 75 years. Let's put, let's put our hands together for the aliens one more time today. <clears throat> amen, amen. If God has been good, won't you say amen one more time? If he's been real good, you ought to shout hallelujah. If you love him, say thank you, Jesus. And if you're glad he's coming again, let's put our hands together for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Giving him the glory and honor that he deserves today. 
I don't know about you, friends, but I'm glad to be here at Alumni Weekend. What do you say? Spirit of the Lord has been heavy with us both on last night's service and in today's service, and we thank God for his appearing. Let me just first begin today by expressing my gratitude for the stellar leadership of our president, Dr. Leslie Pollard. Can you say amen? amen. Dr. Pollard, we listened to you as you talked about the challenges facing higher education. And we want you to know that you don't face those challenges alone, but you have our collective prayers and support. And we are grateful that God has given you the strength to bear that burden with a grace that makes the burden seem like it is effortless for you to carry. And so we thank God for the way that he uses you to lead our institution for such a time as this. And then I want to thank Dr. Parker for the great organization of this weekend. One of the things the Bible says is that one of the gifts of the Spirit is administration. And so you know the anointing is upon occasion, on occasion, not just by what happens up front, but by how smoothly things operate behind closed doors. And so we're grateful for the operations of the Spirit and the organization of Alumni Weekend. Now, before we get to the word, I do want to announce that I am a proud member of the class of 1999. <laughs> I thank God that he allowed me to be a cohort with some amazing people who are still walking in the hands of the Lord 25 years later. And even though, friends, I am grateful to celebrate 25 years, it's a little sober to see how fast 25 years goes by. Am I telling the truth? In fact, there's a time where they're calling you the young people. <laughs> then you look up one day and they're talking about somebody else when they refer to young people. And, and it's interesting, I got an interesting letter a couple weeks ago. I turned 47 years old. And I got a letter from the AARP section. And church, it was cold-blooded because the letter said, you're not eligible yet, but we'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> and so I am thankful that God has given us 25 years post-graduation. I do want to just take a moment briefly to acknowledge the presence of my wife. I want to invite my wife Gianna to stand. Can you give her a hearty amen today? We've been married now for 20 years, four months, 18 days, about 20 hours, and 12 minutes. And every day with her gets a little sweeter than the day before. And I'm grateful to have our three kids, my youngest son, Braden, my daughter, Brooke. And I want to invite my oldest son, Jaden, to stand. He'll be embarrassed. But he just turned 14 years old today. Can you join me in... Wishing him a happy birthday. Amen. And so there's never a dull moment in our house. In fact, he asked me earlier today, Daddy, what will we get to do now that I'm 14? I said, son, now that you're 14, I'm going to let you use the keys to my riding lawnmower. Are y'all hearing me today? <laughs> and so there are privileges. <laughs> And liberties that come with getting a little older. Amen? And I just before we get into the word, I want to thank you for your support of the Breath of Life ministry. For these last two years, because of your support, we've been able to put our broadcast in five new cities, including our first international broadcast in the UK and the continent of Africa. Because of your support, we now have children's content for our little ones and weekly program designed to help you grow in your spiritual walk with God. And so I want to encourage you on tomorrow at 12 to stop by the Office of Regional Conference Ministry where we'll have an open house where we can share our words of appreciation for your support over the last couple of years. And so friends, we want to go ahead and get into the word. Is that all right? I want to just draw your attention to the fact that it's 2.05 p.m. already. Now... I don't say that to throw shade, but I just need a sermonic alibi so that when they say y'all got out of the church after 2 o'clock, it wasn't my fault. Can I get a witness today? But I want to invite you to stand to your feet today as we go two places quickly in the Word. 
If you don't mind, begin with me at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and then put your finger over in Acts chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to begin together at verse number 20. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 20. When you get there, let me hear you say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20, and if you don't mind, put your finger over in Acts chapter 2. When you get there, say, Pastor, I'm there. The Bible says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the what? First fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Now go quickly to Acts chapter 2 and we'll look together at verse number 1. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, when you get there, say, Pastor, I'm there. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and notice it says that one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began speaking with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. And they were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Today, saints, for just a little while with God's help, I want to talk to you under the subject, false pretenses. False pretenses. Let us pray. Father, would you draw so close that the heat of your spirit knocks the chill off of this service? My prayer today is not just for oration, but I pray that there would be a revealing of your spirit in our time that is historic. So Lord, would you please hide me in the shadows of the cross, that Jesus alone might be seen, that Christ alone might be heard, and at the end of our time together, let Jesus alone be praised. Bless us to this end, we ask. In the wonderful name of Jesus, let those who believe say together, amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. You know, friends, a few years back, I planned a surprise birthday party for my wife at our home. And so the gifts had been purchased, the guests had been invited, the theme of the party had been established. But because my wife can sometimes be punctually impaired, I had to create a false pretense to get her home before our guests became weary. And pardon me for faking a church emergency so that she would get home by the appropriate time. I had to create a reason and an urgency to get her in the right location for the occasion. And she thought, church, that she was hurrying home in order to relieve me of the kids, but it was simply a false pretense so that she might receive the gifts that had been prepared for her. 
And can I suggest, friends, that Christ the bridegroom has blessings for us that we know not of. And at times, God allows circumstances to push us into a particular location for a moment of destiny that we might pre receive what he has in store. And so at times, God allows or creates a false pretense to get us in a certain place at a certain time that you might receive what God has in store for you, his child. In other words, church, Joseph was sent to Egypt under false pretenses. Joseph thought he was there to serve as a slave, but after things played out, Joseph said to his brothers, you sent me, sold me, but God sent me. You, God took what you meant for evil and reshaped it so it worked out for my good. You realize that David went to the battle under false pretenses. His dad sent him there with food and supplies for his brethren, but it was God God creating a moment for him to defeat Goliath so that his ultimate purpose might be revealed. Paul went to Damascus under false pretenses. He went there thinking his job was to destroy the church, but God re-intercepted uh, re things so that he could be used to build the church. You see, in Proverbs, it says, in a man's heart, he plans his course, but it is the Lord that determines his steps. And God is like a deistic algorithm who is able to take your choices, your enemy's schemes, and even your mistakes and manage them with such prophetic accuracy that he gets you where he pre-willed and predestined you to be. And it is why Romans 8 is true, that all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his promise. In other words, church, this is not just my theology. It is actually my lived truth. In fact, I remember here in 1998 as a junior theology major just praying that one day I would get a call into the ministry. I remember like it was yesterday. It was All-Star Weekend, and Dr. and Mrs. Pollard were having their farewell at the Oakwood University Church. And so they needed some students to give remarks at the service. And so the USM president at the time could not make it. And so he asked the religious vice to come. And because the religious vice had an appointment, the burden fell upon me. And I tried to give it to somebody else, but nobody else would take it. And so, friends, I remember going down to the church with a bad attitude and a poor disposition. But somehow the Spirit blessed my evil spirit and the words that I put together, so much so that the president of South Central at the time, Joseph McCoy, stood up and said, who is that young man? I want you to make him stay by at the end of service because I want to talk to him about joining South Central Conference. In other words, friends, I thought I was sent as a backup, but God created a pretense for a setup for me to become who he ordained me to be. In other words, if I never join SCC, I never wind up at OUC, and I never start leading BOL, and so I just praise G-O-D that he ordered my steps according to his word. Are you hearing me today? Ah, and so friends today, I want to spend just a few moments talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, to some, that subject may not necessarily fit this particular occasion. But the more I thought about it, friends, I realized that the subject of the Holy Ghost is congruent in content with this particular weekend. 
Now, friends, I find it interesting that it is there at the day of Pentecost that God poured out the Holy Spirit according to the promise of Jesus. And it is interesting because most of us associate the term Pentecost with the phrase Holy Spirit. But how many of us know that in origin the term Pentecost has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost? In fact, the day of Pentecost Pentecost was simply one of the Jewish festivals that was on their annual calendar. In fact, the day of Pentecost was simply a celebration of the completion of the harvest of the annual Jewish grain crop. In other words, after the day of Passover, they would present the first fruit of the grain harvest, and then 50 days later, Pentecost would occur, which symbolized the end end of the harvest season. In other words, friends, those that came for Pentecost were not there to have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Those that came for Pentecost didn't come to learn anything about Jesus. They just showed up because it was on the annual calendar. In other words, before the Holy Spirit Pentecost was just their Jewish alumni weekend. Uh, uh, before the Holy Ghost, Pentecost was simply where alums from Jerusalem came on an annual basis to get reacquainted with those they hadn't seen for a while. Pentecost was simply where alums bought clothes they could not afford and rented the most expensive camels to impress people that were not thinking about them when they came. Uh, you see, Pentecost was a place of distorted recollections where former athletes were able to exaggerate their legend because there weren't enough people still alive to contradict their account. It was a time where veracity became elastic as we began to talk about our previous uh, uh, things and our current successes. And friends, what I simply want to prosper is that the same way this festival had nothing to do with the Holy Ghost, I believe that God simply used the festival as a pretense in order to get everybody in the same place. Maybe that occasion was just how God got everybody in the same room. Maybe it was just how God got everybody to cheer for the same thing. Maybe it was just how God got everybody to come from different parts of the world. It was simply a ruse by which God poured out his spirit upon the church. And friends, I could not help but wonder if God wanted to use this gathering at alumni to do something greater for the church than what we came to experience. Maybe some of us came this year in order to celebrate a particular honor class. Maybe somebody came simply because it's been a minute since you came. Maybe somebody came to see who is still single or newly divorced. Maybe somebody came simply because you were to support an honoree or because you are being honored. But can I suggest that maybe God wanted to draw all of his people from all over the world for a particular purpose, and his goal in this arena was not just to raise money for scholarships. His goal was not for you to just celebrate the four or nine behind your years. Maybe his goal was not just for you to be seen in your fancy attire. Maybe God brought you all the way here so that he could pour out the power of the Holy Spirit. 
In other words, church, could it be that right now heaven's raptors are sagging with frustrated power because God wants to send a power that we're not ready to receive? And one of the things I want to say is that I believe every gathering of this sort ought to be considered a candidate for the outpouring of the latter rain. And see, friends of mine, my fear for some of us today is that we will have come from across one coast to the next. Some will have been driven from the east coast all the way from the south, and we'll come to alumni and leave worse spiritually than how we came. You see, the problem with some is that we're going to sit through a thousand concerts. We're going to listen to a half dozen sermons. We're going to gather every souvenir and every replica. And we're going to go back home with every gift except the gift of the Holy Spirit. And see, friends of mine, I simply believe today that God wants to use this moment to create a spiritual redirection, to change the trajectory of where the church is moving in our time, if that makes sense. Let me hear you say amen. And so, friends, I believe that this can be an occasion. Do I have any witnesses here with me today? Is there anybody that's looking for the latter rain in your time? Is there anybody that believes the Holy Ghost is not a fictional character? Way to church at this afternoon. I, I believe that God wants to pour out the Holy Ghost, but there have got to be three focuses in order for us to receive him. The first focus, friends, is that we've got to be more focused on the indwelling than our outfits. Okay, let, let, let me say it again. That if you're going to receive the Holy Ghost, you've got to be more focused on the indwelling than the outfit you're wearing. And see, the problem with services like alumni is that at times we can be more focused on image than character. Acts of the Apostles, page 35, she says, as the disciples waited for the fulfillment of the promise, they humbled their hearts in true repentance. They confessed their sins and their unbelief. And they prayed not for a physical fitness, but they prayed for an earnest spiritual fitness to be fit to do God's will. And one of the things I simply want to suggest, friends, is that if we spent as much time seeking the Holy Ghost, as we did seeking our outfit or combination for today, the latter rain would have fallen a long time ago. And, and, and I know you're going to be in your feelings, but I'm going to stand here in the strength of God anyhow. Because, see, I need us to get, friends, that there is nothing wrong with having stylistic expression. There is nothing wrong with having outward appearance. But there is a problem if we build the outward at the expense of the inside. You see, friends of mine, I need us to know that our greatest need today is not external. Am I preaching to anybody today? In fact, friends, this is what brings judgment against the church of Laodicea, which represents the body in our time. For God says, your problem is that you say you're rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, but you don't realize that internally you're poor and blind and miserable and naked. And watch this, church. The problem with Laodicea is not that they have external opportunities because that blessing give, it was given to them by God. But the problem with Laodicea is they are content with the appearance of wellness. In other words, they're straight just having people think that they're doing well. And the problem is that when you focus on the outside, it's going to create a spiritual plateau because what Laodicea did is they allowed their external surplus to be a ruse to cover their internal deficits. And see, friends, I want to just suggest today that there is a problem in the church if you spent more time preparing your hair than you did preparing your heart for worship this afternoon. 
Ah, uh, it's a problem, church. If you spent more time searching for your suit than searching your soul before God, it's a problem if your shirt went to the cleaners but your spirit did not. It is a problem if you bent your knees to polish your rims, but you hadn't been on your knees to call on the name of God. There is something wrong if you lifted your hand to take a selfie, but you couldn't lift your hands to praise the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, the reason the service is so cold is because you're sitting here too cute, like God hadn't done nothing for you. If you just opened up your mouth, we would have a little more heat in this place. Maybe if you lifted a hand, maybe if you tapped a foot, maybe if you ran a lap, is anybody thankful today that God made a way when there was no way and that God came through right on time and some graduated summa cum laude and some graduated magna cum laude, but do I have any in the balcony that graduated thank you, Lord? And what I'm saying to somebody today, friends, is that there's got to be a little less focus on the outside and the building of the inside. And see, the issue, friends, is how God makes people. See, when God builds a man, he doesn't build a man from his exterior in. God builds us from the inside out. And see, and that's why when you're growing spiritually, your growth ought to be like fruit. Have you ever noticed, friends of mine, that fruit grows from the inside out? So that when a piece of fruit is not ripe, what it does is it alerts its exterior disposition. So that when the orange or the banana or the apple is not ripe, when you touch it, it's going to be hard to the touch. And guess what? It's going to be green so that it's announcing on the outside that I'm not quite complete on the inside. But the great thing about fruit is that once it's ripe on the inside, what happens is it sends protein to break down the cellular wall so it's no longer hard, but it gets soft. And then when it gets ripe, it breaks down the chlorophyll, which is green, so that the green is removed and it begins to take its color so that once it's done on the inside, it's going to announce it to the outside so that when you bite it, you'll never be disappointed because the outside told you what was inside. And see, that's why you ought to have spiritual fruit instead of the potato chips of the flesh. Uh, uh, in other words, friends, fruit is developed from the inside. But have you ever noticed when you go to a bag of potato chips, man, that bag is puffy and it's full, but when you open it, it's only a third of chips at the bottom, and the rest is hot air. And the problem is that some of us got a lazy anointing because we all puffed up. But when you get close, ain't nothing but hot air. And I don't know about you, church. I'm just at a place where I want the Lord to do it inside first. Lord, do it in my heart. Lord, do it in my mind. Lord, do it in my spirit. I'm not worried about my outfit. I'm not worried about what they might say. I'm not worried about how they perceive me. I want character more than I want reputation. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? Second thing this story teaches us as we focus is that we've got to focus not just on private worship, we've got to focus on the power of our public gathering. Now, y'all don't get a little quiet in here. I found this interesting, church. Did you notice in verse 6 that those that came from out of town, the Bible says that they were able to hear the sound of the Spirit falling. In other words, church, they were close enough 
to hear the sound of the wind. They were close enough to hear the sound of them speaking in tongues. They were close enough to hear the sound of the Spirit, but they weren't close enough to experience the Holy Spirit. In other words, the problem was that when the Spirit was falling, some of them were in the lobby like those outside. They were close enough to hear it falling. But because they were not in the upper room, they served the sound of the evidence, but they didn't have the experience because when they came for alumni, they spent more time in the lobby and more time in the outer court than they spent in the upper room. I know y'all going to cancel me today, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And, and Dr. Pollard, I, I don't know what we got to do to change the culture of this service, but we've got 40-year lack of institutional control where we can and have more people in the outside than we have where prayers are being made and the gospel is being preached. Are y'all hearing me today, Sans? And it's crazy because the Bible says that they hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Now, it's crazy. I, the Brown, I used to always see this as a place of chaos and confusion where, man, God just fills up the room with mighty rushing wind. Hair is in somebody's faces. Wigs are being thrown out. Papers are being displaced. But understand that God is a God of order, so there is no confusion in this space. They don't feel wind. They just hear it. And it is to fulfill what Jesus said in John 3 when he says the spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it goes. You just see the demonstration and the effects. And the reason God shows up with tongues of fire is simply to pro uh, complete the prophecy of what he said about John the Baptist. Where he says, John, baptize with water, but I'm going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. And I love what one scholar says because they didn't know how to expect or what to expect when the Holy Spirit came, God gave the Spirit display so that they would not miss the appearing of the Holy Ghost. And friends, I need you to notice something, that when the Holy Spirit fell, it did not settle upon them like a fog. Okay. When the Spirit fell, it did not settle on them like a cloud. But notice the word says that when the Spirit falls, it shows up in a fiery ball, but then it disperses itself so that each one has a cloven tongue sitting upon them individually. Oh, y'all missed it. You missed it. In other words, the Spirit does not settle upon them like a cloud where I can receive the Spirit by proximity or being in the room. No, when the Spirit showed up, He comes in a discerning fashion. So He doesn't just waste Himself and just pour Himself everywhere. He is targeted and He allows the Spirit to rest upon them individually as an outward sign of their determination to know God. Are y'all hearing me today? Now, the reason this is critical is because they meet the Spirit in a church gathering, but the Spirit falls on them individually. In other words, you couldn't get the Spirit by just happening to be at the right place at the right time. You had to be seeking Him privately in order to receive him publicly. Oh, y'all not hearing me today. And see, I love some of y'all that have great public demonstrations of worship. But you ain't got no private devotion with God. See, I need you to know that a public demonstration without a private connection ain't nothing but a pretend performance. 
And it's crazy because God is allowing some tensions that we kind of oftentimes see as being in conflict. These tensions don't collide, but they actually complement one another. Why? Because the Spirit falls in a corporate gathering. But guess what? They've got to know him individually in order to receive him. Why am I saying this? Because we are the generation in a post-pandemic world that has tried to displace the importance of the church gathering under the false pretense that we know God individually. But how many of us understand, friends, that those things were never supposed to be either or? It was supposed to be both and. It was never supposed to be either I pray at home or I pray at church. It was supposed to be both. It was never supposed to be I worship at home or worship at church. It was supposed to be both. It was never supposed to be I study at home or go to Sabbath school. It was supposed to be both. It was never supposed to be I, st I know God at home so I don't have to know him at church. No, understand there is nothing that we do in private that negates our need to come together as a group. And there is nothing that you get in church that negates your need to have personal uh, devotion and worship with God. In other words, it was never supposed to be one or the other. I was supposed to use one to augment the next, that my public was supposed to be an outgrowth of the private. In other words, church, I need you to know I study at home, I pray at home, I worship at home, but I'm just old enough that I can say like David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The promise is that when two or three gather in his name, in person or online, he'll be there in the midst. Is there anybody grateful that Psalms 100 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The Bible says, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him with the timbrel and harp. Praise him on the high-sounding cymbals. Praise him on the loud cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. Third thing, I'm moving quick today. Third focus is this, is that the spirit only falls in a place where there is unity. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not fall in a room where you got people in opposition on two different sides. The Spirit falls in a space where there is a oneness and a singleness of mission and purpose. Why y'all looking at me crazy today? Acts of the Apostles, page 36, Ellen White says that when they gathered in the upper room, watch this, they began putting away all differences, all desire for supremacy, and they claim, came close together in Christian fellowship. Now watch this. Notice Ellen White says that they put away all differences. It didn't say they stopped having differences. In other words, when the Spirit comes, Lewis, he does not brainwash them into this spiritual nirvana where, man, they become people without choice of their own, where they see everything the same way, say everything the same way, and share their same worldview. In other words, they still have differences, but they do the hard, pride-swallowing work of setting aside their differences. And can I just say this quickly, church? My fear for Adventism, it is not outward persecution. See, we spend our whole time bracing for persecution. But why is the devil going to persecute churches that ain't growing? We ain't growing fast enough for the devil to submit that type of force. Our greatest threat in our day and time, it is not in least in North America, outward persecution, but it is an internal implosion that is the result of our factions and divisions in the church. And 
it makes sense now why Jesus gave the instructions that he did before he ascended back to glory. Notice that we, we, we say the Lord's Prayer is uh, our Father which art in heaven. That's not the Lord's Prayer. E.D. Cleveland said that's the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer was one of unity where he said, Lord, make them one as you and I are one. Did you notice his instruction to the disciples that a house divided against itself cannot stand and he actually uses the devil as our example he says Belzebub will never be divided against itself because the devil knew that the demonic host would operate with more unity than the body of Christ and see the problem with the church is that we focus more on our differences than our commonalities. You see, friends of mine, I need you to know that I'm not going to allow our differences to put me on the opposite side of you. If you believe Jesus died, if you believe he rose, if you believe he's coming again, if you still believe in the message of the third angel, if you believe that the just shall be saved by faith, if you hold those beliefs in common, we are brethren. Because, church, I need y'all to remember the disciples, they had differences of all sorts. Man, they had differences about who Jesus was. They had differences about their perception of the crucifixion. They had differences about what it meant to be a part of his kingdom. They had differences about who was going to play what role in the kingdom. But the thing I like about the disciples is that at some point they laid aside the differences. And it's crazy because we allow all these stupid, can I just preach it like I feel it? I know you ain't supposed to say stupid on a college campus, but we allow all these little stupid factions to emerge in the church and keep us on opposite sides. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all Adventists, y'all some funny people. Sometimes I have to dissociate myself from some of it. Because we're the only people that are vegetarian in theology, but cannibal in practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's us. The only flesh some of y'all have ever eaten is human. You ain't never ate no chicken, no rack of lamb, but you chew on your pastors and your leaders and your choir directors. Ah, you just ripped the bone off. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. That's y'all. <laughs> oh, Lord. And guess what? We get into all these little different groups in church, and all these, again, stupid conversations on Facebook, and we, and we divide into sides based on those who love the hymns of the church versus those that love contemporary gospel. We create sides based on what we eat. So the vegetarians look down on the meat eaters. And then the vegans come along and look down their nose on all of y'all. Come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. I mean, we literally allow ourselves to get divided over those who are jewelry free. <laughs> Don't cover your ears now. <laughs> and those who are jewelry full. Uh, we allow ourselves to get divided between those who believe women should be pastors and those who will literally leave a church because your pastor is a woman. 
And we allow these things to separate us with, with into variable or different camps within the body of Christ. And I need you to know that none of those things are actually essential to Adventist identity. All those things are peripheral. All those things are ancillary. None of those things speak to the content of who we are. Are y'all hearing me today, church? And it's a strange thing because the thing about the disciples is not that they don't have differences, but you know what they do in the upper room? At some point, the disciples simply call a truce. They, they make a decision that the promise that is coming is more important than the differences that are present. So we're going to call a truce so that we can receive the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And what I'm saying to the church in our time is that we need to call some truces. Can I suggest, friends, that we need to call a, 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 a worship truce and stop being hymns versus gospel. And just remember what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, where he says, sing unto the Lord with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and make a melody from your heart. We need to call a dietary truce and stop looking at one another's place because Jesus says it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles, but it's what comes out of your mouth that's going to put you in hell. We need to call a generational truce where the old are not fighting against the young. For Proverbs 16 says that a head of gray hair is a splendor and it is attained by a life of righteousness. But in 1 John chapter 2, God says, I call the young because they are strong. In other words, the old folk need the strength of the youth and the youth need the wisdom of the old. And we would be stronger together than we would be if we kept fighting one another. There needs to be a truce between the laity and the clergy. I just went to the Holy Land. I ain't never seen no shepherd fighting against the sheep, but the shepherds give their lives for the sheep, and good sheep follow the good shepherd. And at some point, there's got to be a truce in the Oakwood community. At some point, there will have to be a truce between the administration and the alum. At some point, we're going to have to put aside our differences. At some point, we're going to have to get our business off the news, out the newspaper, out the comment section, and we've got to learn how to get into an upper room where prayer is being made and we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. There needs to be a truce, a ceasefire where we get on the same page and we realize we are stronger together. Friends, have you ever noticed in the corporate room world, every now and then you'll have two titans of industry that will form a corporate merger. And you know there's a purpose behind it. It's not because one is outdueling the next, but at some point somebody in those two competing entities like Sprint and T-Mobile, they're like, man, why are we wasting our resources trying to fight one another and outdo one another for customers? You know what they say we're going to do? We're going to get together and form one super company, and we're going to develop a monopoly, and we're going to form our resources as one because we're stronger as a unit than we are as individuals. Okay, y'all didn't get that. Take your cue and watch just what happens in a minute in the Republican Party. Now, y'all just saw all the candidates for president, like they all got on the stage and talked about how crazy and unfit Donald Trump is. Y'all saw that, right? Now, watch in about a month and a half. All those who are saying he ain't the one, 
Because they love the party. Because they value the party, are going to lay aside everything they just said so that the party they love is able to thrive. And what I'm saying is, friends, that if demons, I meant Republicans, I meant tomato, tomato, uh, I don't know. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we shall push no political party. Uh, I don't want us to lose our 501c3. Come on and say that. But if in the world they can lay aside differences, what's wrong with the church of the living God? Are y'all hearing me today, friends? Listen, I'm done. Because some of y'all probably still sitting here wondering, well, why is the pastor talking about Pentecost on the weekend of the resurrection? Man, ask me, why am I talking about Pentecost on the weekend of the resurrection? Oh, I'm so glad you finally asked me because I've been waiting to tell you. Because the festival of Pentecost didn't so much point to the Holy Spirit. The festival of Pentecost was actually a foreshadowing of the resurrection. Oh, God. So remember, friends, that after the Passover, the first day of the next week, what they would do is they would present the first fruits as an offering to God. And once the priests Urim and Thummim began to light up as a sign that the first fruit offering was accepted, they would begin to praise him in advance. Because if the first fruit was accepted, it meant the rest of the harvest was on the way. Y'all missed it. In other words, Jesus died on Good Friday. He laid in the tomb on Sabbath. But early on the first day of the week, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus is the first fruit that was raised from the dead. And that's why he told Mary, don't touch me because I've not yet ascended to my father. In other words, the first fruit offering had not yet been presented. But because God accepted the offering of the first fruit in Jesus that was raised from the dead, because Jesus broke the ground, because Jesus was raised, the rest of the harvest is guaranteed because the first fruit had been accepted. Y'all missed it. You realize that the primary theme for the uh, resurrection in the New Testament is the term harvest, which is why most cemeteries are called gardens. Oh, God. Because how many of us know you don't bury Christians you plant them. Oh, God. <laughs> you bury unbelievers, but you plant believers. So grandma ain't buried, she's planted. Your husband ain't buried, he's planted. Your mama ain't buried, she's planted. Your daddy ain't buried, he's planted. Because when I bury something, I ain't going to see it no more. But when I plant something, one day, there's going to come a latter rain. And whatever was buried is going to break the ground. And those that have been planted in Christ, guess what? They're going to be raised in Christ. And they're going to be raised with resurrection power, resurrection glory. Can anybody praise him that one day when we're raised, there'll be no more cancer and there'll be no more blindness and there'll be no more lupus and there'll be no more ERs for the former things will be passed away when Jesus comes. Are y'all hearing me today? Go ahead and play something. I'm done. 
And it's crazy because I'm still trying to figure out, Dr. Pollard, what's the correlation between Pentecost, the resurrection, and the Holy Spirit? So watch this. I love what Ellen White says here. She says here in Desire of Acts of the Apostles, page 38, that the Pentecostal outpouring. Y'all sit with me, church? I'm done. I'm going to let y'all go home. The Pentecostal outpouring. Y'all still with me? I just need to make sure y'all don't miss this. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that the Redeemer's inauguration was accomplished. According to the promise, he sent the Holy Spirit from heaven to his followers as a token that he had as priest and king received all authority in heaven and on earth, and that he was the anointed one. See, Daniel lets us know that the anointed one would get cut off in the middle of that 70th week. Oh, where the seven-day Adventists at in this room? So I need you to understand the, word, the, the correlation between resurrection, Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit. Y'all still here, church? So that as Jesus now ascends back to heaven, as the disciples stand there gazing, and a cloud is taking him away from their sight, and as Jesus approaches the portals of glory, now clothed in human garb, there are these great angels that guard the gates of pearl, and when they see the master coming, they say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. And those on the inside say, who is this King of glory? And it's not that they don't know who he is. They just like hearing the sound of his name. And those who hold the gates say, he is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And it's crazy because Jesus Christ walks in in a form that is hardly recognizable by the angelic hosts that are used to seeing him in his pre-human form. And they begin to melt with a river of tears as they see scars in his hands, scars in his feet, and a wound still fresh in his side. And I can see my great Jesus still with the vestiges of a bloody cross as he begins to march or parallel with the river of the water from the stream of life toward the throne room of heaven. And I can see him marching toward his father's throne. And I can see him who is clothed in unapproachable light beginning to move toward the Son of God. And as he begins to approach the Son, the Son begins to declare to the Father, Father, my blood, my blood, my blood is sufficient for them. And see, what commences is what she described as a service of inauguration. Oh, God. You got to see this in heaven. Because remember that in, in ancient times when a king was seated and a king was established, they didn't just have him put his hands on a Bible and take an oath. You know what they did for a new king? They anointed him. And understand that old school anointings were not this neat thing where they just poured a dab on the finger and rubbed it on the head. But Dr. Watkins, they would take a big vessel full of oil and as Jesus knelt, they would begin to pour that big vessel of oil all over the king's head. And because anointing was messy, all the oil wouldn't rest on the head, but there would be some drops. There would be some drops that would fall from the head. And if you were serving the king, some of the anointing that fell from the king would fall on those who served the king. So what happened on the day of Pentecost 
It was the day of Christ's anointing, where when the Spirit was poured on Christ, all of it didn't stay in heaven. There were a few drops that fell down to an upper room where the Spirit of God fell upon the disciples. And see, this is why Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do in my name because we're not fed from a different anointing. We walk in the same anointing that Jesus himself received. Are y'all hearing this today, friends? But friends, I need you to know that the time of the latter rain, as the prophet says, it is not some time in the future. It is not some time way down the road. She says that if we pray for it, if we seek it, if we long for it, we can have him right now in our time. But friends of mine, what I'm saying we got to do is we got to become a people. And again, nothing wrong with you getting your hair done and having nice shoes. I, I ain't got nothing to say about that. But we got to be more focused on the infilling than the outfits. Some of us build the external at the expense of the internal. We, we, we've got to have multiple types of gathering. You ought to seek God in private. But guess what, man? The book of Hebrews says, For take not the assembling of yourselves with one another, as is the manner of some. And he speaks prophetically, but he says, Do it all the more as you see the day approaching. And I accept the fact that gathering is different than what it was. If you gather in community online, let God be praised there also. But you know what God is calling us to? He's calling us to be a church of oneness. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one message. He has not called us to fractions and divisions. He has called us to operate as one as he and the Father are one. I know the hour is late, but I want you to meditate on the words of this song. Then I want to invite us corporately to make some decisions about how we're going to move, how we're going to function, how we're going to operate as the body of Christ. If God has been good to you, can you put your hands together and praise today? Anointing. Yes, sir. Praise God. Let it fall on me. Yes, sir. Standing to our feet. I'm, I'm keenly aware of the hour. But I promise you, friends, that I spent my week between the porch and the altar not to just be entertaining so you will say it was good. But the Lord has put a burden on my heart 
to see the Spirit of God fall in such a way on this church that it changes the way we do business until the Lord comes. Maybe you came this week just because it was a certain year. Maybe you came just to see some friends. Maybe you came to honor or to, to be honored. It doesn't really matter why you came. They came to the, the day of Pentecost just to celebrate the completion of the grain harvest. But God had something else in mind. And I believe that every time we gather in Jesus' name, we ought to be candidates for the outpouring of the latter rain. And so today, friends, I want to invite you. You're simply saying, Pastor, I, I want to be the type of believer that's focused more on internal growth as opposed to external projection. I, I, I want to combine both my private worship and my public gathering, and I want to be a vessel of unity. I don't want to be a vessel of discord. I don't want to be a vessel of strife. I want to be a part of the solution and never a part of the problem. If that's you today, wherever you are, I invite you to just push down to the front. I want to pray a corporate prayer that the Spirit of God would fall fresh, that God's Spirit would fall anew, that God would do a new thing in us, a new thing for us. So, so if you're here today and you say, I, I need my greatest need, my greatest need is for more of His Spirit. Won't you come? 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 why we have come. This is why we have come. Because at some point there's going to be a gathering like this where the earth begins to shake and we will see and experience the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And I guess my thought today, if it's going to happen, why not today? Why not now? And why not let me be a witness to it? And I don't want to be so close where I can hear it, but I'm so far enough where I can't experience it. So do me a favor, go ahead and bring it down just a little bit. I'm going to pray. But I do believe every worker in the church, you ought to be here. Every worker in the church, you ought to be here. You ought to be here. Everybody who loves the church, you ought to be here. Those who want the anointing of God in a fresh, new way, I invite you to come. I invite you to come. Before I pray, we're going to do what the disciples did. Because the cloven tongues fall on us individually. Let there be in the house of God some time of personal confession and repentance. See, I, I would say I want to pray for you, but guess what? The old system of types and priesthood, that's been torn down. I'm not going to pray for you. I'm praying with you today. You don't need a priest. You don't need a mediator. You don't need a go-between. You can go straight to the throne yourself today. So right now, let there be confession, repentance in the house of the Lord. There just may need to be some repentance if you spent more time in preparation for today's service on the outside than you did on the inside. Let there be repentance in the house of God.
Just take a few moments to confess all known sin. Rend your heart and not your garments before the Lord our maker today. Cloven tongues of fire rest on your people, Jesus. And now you're committing yourself to being a vessel of unity. To say, I'm, I'm, I'm staying out the comment section. And I'm going to live in the action section. You're saying, I don't want to be a hearer. I want to be a doer. And you want to say, listen, I realize I've got a legit point of view. I've got a legit difference with the way church does things. Listen, that's not what I'm dealing with. But I'm saying at some point we got to lay the difference aside. And we got to get in the upper room where the difference can be transformed. Your difference is legit. That's not where I'm at. I'm saying we got to approach it differently. So in this moment of unity, let there be a symbol. Would you join hands with those connected with you just close by? If you're COVID conscious, just touch elbows, touch shoulders. As we pray what Jesus prayed for us, that he would make us one. Father in heaven, Lord, my prayers have no more merit than anyone's here. But Lord, we just rehearse your express desire that as a last day church, we would be one. Lord, your servant talks about how in the upper room there was a singleness of mind and that there was no division amongst them. Father, I'm praying that you would help us to set aside both personal and worldview differences, doctrinal differences, and help us to come together in close Christian fellowship. Father, I pray in the matchless name of J Jesus that unity would not be just a concept, but that it would be the lived truth for the church in our time. Father, we just take the time today to have a moment where we beat our swords into plow shields. And we put both hands on the plow and we make the covenant to not look back. Father, we realize that there is a dying world that cares nothing about our internal disputes. They just need to know that there is a Jesus who saves and a Lord who is coming again. So Father, I pray that even as we work through our differences with intentionality, intelligence, anointing, and focus, may we never allow the difference to get in the way of the main thing, which is the gospel to the entire world. May women's ordination not permanently divide us. May diet not divide us. May liturgy not divide us. May, may, may the way we operate not be the way that thing that divides us. But Lord, may we be bound together with such a love for Jesus, such a love for the church for which he died in the church that he is sanctifying and coming back to receive. And help all of us under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit to join me in saying we call a truce. We call a truce over issues of worship, diet, dress, and Lord, as we call a truce, it doesn't mean that we stop fighting, it simply means we start fighting together. Lord, as we approach these disputes, may we not approach them with 
opinions and I think, I thought, felt, or, or, or I feel, but may the scriptures be the arbiter in every dispute. May we go back to the word line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, and help us to move our point of view out of the way, Jesus. Lord, let there be a truce in the Oakwood community. Lord, help each and every principle to, to be able to lay the differences aside so that we can come together under the blood-stained banner so that young children of color may be able to enter to learn and they will be given the tools to depart to serve. So come, Holy Spirit. Come. Let me change that. Lord, I thank you for coming. I thank you for creating this moment. I thank you for bringing us to a place of truce where we do not ignore issues, but we work with them with the wisdom that heaven alone is able to provide for the betterment of your church, your school, your people, and your children. Bless, keep, and cover us. And may Oakwood from this point forth experience exponentially supernatural growth. May Ephesians 3.20 be our reality now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. Bless us. Keep and cover us. And may drops that fell from the head of the anointed one Jesus continue to fall on us. This is my prayer. This is our collective plea. And now it is our expectation and hope. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Let those who love him say amen. Let those who love him shout hallelujah. Let those lift holy hands putting their hands together, thanking him in advance, thanking him that the Spirit has come and that he will abide and that he would do new work in us. An amazing message from God. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like a copy of this message, please call the Breath of Life office Monday through Thursday at 256-929-6460, or you can visit our website at breathoflife.tv. We hope you tune in again next week, and thank you for joining us here at your Breath of Life. Calling all leaders, visionaries, dreamers, content creators. We're inviting you to the 2024 Vision and Dreamers Conference hosted by Breath of Life. The theme for this year is excuseless. We want you to know that this year's conference is not about spreadsheets, budgets, or accounting. We're gonna be talking about the process your soul goes through whenever you're developing or implementing a vision. We're gonna be equipping you with the tools to develop a vision ethic. We're gonna be talking about things like your frustrations, how to manage your fears, dealing with criticism, or enduring seasons of waiting. Join us at the Oakwood University Church, May 17th through 19th. We're gonna kick it off Friday night with a Vesper, a vision talk, and a mixer. Join us Saturday morning at 11, where I'm gonna give a word just for you. We'll be joined in partnership by gospel recording artists, Myron Butler and Levi. We're gonna have lunch together. And then that afternoon, there are gonna be a number of plenary sessions and breakout sessions. And we'll conclude Sunday morning with our vision brunch. We have an amazing lineup of speakers and presenters. Movie producer, Devon Franklin, YouTube influencers, the Onyx family, and Grammy Award winning, Kelvin Wooten, and many, many more. I wanna invite you to go to our website and register right now at www.breathoflife.tv. 
registration cost is $150. But I want you to know that what you're going to receive is going to be way more than what you actually give. I believe that God has put a huge vision or dream inside of you, and we don't want to allow excuses to smother it. I want to invite you to join us on the revolution as we continue the journey of becoming excuseless. Are you tired of just being tired? Are you frustrated because your results never change? Do you feel like life is just going in circles? I'm excited to introduce my newest book entitled Excuseless. And I'm gonna be talking about how to cancel the excuses that smother our soul wellness. I need you to know that your issue is not your circumstances, it's not the challenges, it is the lies that we tell ourselves about why we're not progressing. When you tell yourself, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough resources, I don't have enough money, those are the excuses that are keeping you from becoming whom God has called you to be. So this book is going to be talking to you about how to manage your distractions, how to overcome your fears, how to walk through procrastination, and to become the best version of yourself. So join me on Saturday, April the 13th, as I begin a teaching series entitled Excuseless. Every Saturday and Wednesday, we're gonna walk through the Word of God and give you the cheat code to having a life filled with progress. And then I want you to join us starting Sunday, April the 14th for our 21 days of prayer. We're gonna march through the content of the book. We're gonna testify. We're gonna call on the name of the Lord and we're gonna grow as a community of faith. You'll be able to get the book Excuseless on our Breath of Life website at www.breathoflife.tv or on amazon.com. You can join us for our 21 days on our Oakwood University Church platforms and on our Breath of Life platforms. I need you to know that we're about to start a revolution. There's about to be a growth grenade. I wanna invite you to join me on this journey as we begin the process of becoming excuses. Hello, I'm Pastor Debbie Air Snell, Speaker Director for the Breath of Life Television Ministry. This ministry was established to take the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout North America and across the globe. My goal is to make Jesus Christ known through the preaching of the word. I need you to know that we need your financial partnership in order to make sure that the gospel can go into every hill, into every rural county, and into every inner city. And we can only take the gospel as far as the gifts that you lend to us. We thank you for your financial partnership in the past, and I'm asking that you will continue to be a financial partner with this ministry going forward. Here are some ways you can give. You can give online at our website at www.breathoflife.tv. You can send your gift by mail to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama 35814. You can call the office at 256-929-6460, or you can text the phrase give to BOLTV to 188-364-GIVE, or the easiest thing is through Cash App at dollar sign Breath of Life TV. I want you to know that every dime that you give goes right back into the ministry so that we can enlarge our reach and make sure that the entire world knows that Jesus saves and that Jesus Christ is coming again. God bless you and we thank you for your generosity to the Breath of Life ministry. What's good family? This is Pastor Snell looking forward to seeing you this Friday evening at the Weekend Exhale with BOL. This Friday, we'll be consulting the playbook, which is the Word of God. And we'll be answering the question, what does the Bible have to say about alcohol and drinking? I get that question all the time. But the good news is we don't have to guess. 
We don't have to go by what anybody else says. Our coach, Jesus, has drawn it up in the Word, which is our playbook. Look forward to seeing you Friday night for the Weekend XL. to the Father, except that he comes through me, oh, let not mercy, let not mercy and, truth and truth save for